fires of the temporary union of spirit and matter, the fires of cosmic love and the fires of matter blended. A similar analogy is found in the heat apparent in this second solar system. The, the atom, the inner fires of the atom can likewise be seen functioning along similar lines, their demonstration being already somewhat recognized by science. This being so there exists no necessity for further. Elaboration point 21. 21 inches it should be remembered that the mere scale does not matter, for greatness and smallness are essentially relative. The destiny of each atom is to create a brahmanda. Brahmandas like or smaller or larger than ours, held together by a sun, are present in every atom. Vishvas, great world systems, exist in an atom, and atoms again exist in these Vishvas. This is the significance of, many from one, wherever we see the one we should recognize. The many also, and conversely. After securing the ability of a then actually, creating a Brahmanda, the next step is the creation of a Jagat, then a Vishva, then a Maha Vishva and so on, till the status of Mahavishnu is reached. Bhagavan Das in the Pranavabhada, P. 94. T-H-E-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-F-I-R-E-S. 65. 2. Fire Elementals and Devas. We might now briefly consider the subject of the Fire Elementals and Devas, and then deal with the relation of the personality ray to this internal fire of the system in its threefold manifestation. Certain facts are known in connection with the fire spirits, if so they may be termed. The fundamental fact that should here be emphasized is that Agni, the Lord of Fire, rules over all the fire elementals and devas on the three planes of human evolution, the physical, the astral, and the mental, and rules over them not only on this planet, called the Earth, but on the three planes in all parts of the system. He is one of the seven brothers, to use an expression familiar to students of the secret doctrine, who each embody one of the seven principles, or who are in themselves the seven centers in the body of the cosmic Lord of Fire, called by H. P. P. Fohat. He is that active fiery intelligence, who is the basis of the internal fires of the solar system. On each plane one of these brothers holds sway, and the three elder brothers, for always the three will be seen, and later the seven, who eventually merge into the primary three rule on the first, third and the fifth planes, are on the plane of Adi, of Atma 22 and of Manas. It is urgent that we here remember that they are fire view. 22 Adma means as you all know the self or the ego or an individualized center of consciousness around which all worldly experiences in their whole aspect of subjective and objective cluster and arrange themselves. It is as it were one of the foci from which emerge rays of light to illumine the cosmic waters and in which also converge the rays sent back by those waters. In theosophical writings, it is called the self-conscious individuality or the higher manas. From this point of view, you will see that the higher manas is the most important principle or the central pivot of the human constitution or the true soul. It is the thread which ought to be caught hold of by one who wants to know the truth and lift himself out of this conditioned existence. To this it may be objected that Adma represents the seventh principle of the Theosophical Septenary and that the Manas is far lower in the scale. But the plain answer is that the seventh principle is the ultimate state attainable by the self after crossing the ocean of conditioned existence or samsara. 
some thoughts on the Gita, P. 26. 66 AT Reatize on Cosmic Fire and its third aspect, the Fire of Matter. In their totality these seven wars form the essence of the Cosmic Lord, called in the occult books, Bohat.23. This is so in the same sense as the seven Chohans, 24 with their affiliated groups of pupils, form the essence or centers in the body of one of the heavenly men, one of the planetary logos. These seven again in their turn form the essence of the logos. Each of the seven lords of fire 25 are differentiated into numerous groups of fire entities, from the Hebrew lords of the plane down to the little salamanders of the internal furnaces. We are not dealing with the fiery essences of the higher planes at this stage in our discussion. We will only enumerate somewhat briefly some of the better known groups, as contacted in the three worlds. 1. Physical Plane Salamanders those little fire elementals who can be seen dancing in every flame, tending the fires of the hearth and the home, and of the factory. They are of the same group as the fire spirits who can be contacted deep in the fiery bowels of the planet. Fire spirits, latent in all focal points of heat, who are themselves the essence of warmth, and can be contacted. Of those rays. 
other forms of such elemental lives in Aviva groups might be enumerated, but the above tabulation will suffice for our present purpose. 2. The Astral Plane the fiery essences of this plane are more difficult for us to comprehend, having not, as yet, the seeing eye upon that plane. They are in themselves the warmth and heat of the emotional body, and of the body of feeling. They are of a low order when upon the path of desire, and of a high order when upon the path of aspiration, for the elemental is then transmuted into the diva. Their grades and ranks are many, but their names matter not save in one instance. It may be of interest to know the appellation applied to the devas of fire whose part it is to tend the fires that will later destroy the causal body. We need to remember that it is the upspringing of the latent fire of matter and its merging with two other fires that causes destruction. These elementals and devas are called the Agnesians, and in 68 A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E. Their totality are the fiery essences of Buddy, hence their lowest manifestation is on the sixth plane, the astral. Further information concerning these people lives will be found further on in the treatise where they are dealt with at some length. Section 1. Division D. P-A-P-P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-I-T-Y-R-A-Y-A-N-D-F-I-R-E-B-Y Christian. 1. 2. 3. The work of the three rays. 1. The personality ray. 2. The egoic ray. 3. The monotic ray. The Personality Ray and the Permanent Atom The Personality Ray and Karma I, the W-O-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-T-H-R-E-A-R-A-Y-S W-E here touch upon a matter of wide general interest yet which is with all very little comprehended. I refer to the subject of the permanent atoms point two six each body or form wherein spirit functions has, for its focal point on each plane, an atom composed of matter of the atomic subplane of each plane. This serves as a nucleus for the distribution of force, for the conservation of faculty, for the assimilation of experience, and for the preserva. 26 permanent atom, an appropriated point of atomic matter, a tiny center of force which forms the central factor and the attractive agency around which the sheets of the incarnating monad are built. These are strung like pearls upon the sutradma, a thread, ray, a stream of force or an emanation, the solar logos, or the macrocosm manifests through three major rays and four minor rays. The monad or microcosm likewise manifests through three rays as mentioned in the text above. All rays express a peculiar and specialized type of force. Triad. This is the magma body monad, the expression of the monad, just as the personality is the expression of the ego. The monad expresses itself through the triad, and in its lowest or third aspect forms the egoic or causal body, the infant or terminal ego. Similarly, the ego expresses itself through the threefold lower man, mental, emotional, and etheric these being the reflection of the higher triad, and these three give rise to the dense physical manifestation. 69. Keon of memory. These atoms are in direct connection with one or other of the three great rays in connection with the microcosm. A. B. C. The monotic ray, the synthetic ray of the microcosm. 
It works upon the spirilli, and brings them all gradually into play. 2. The Personality Ray and the Permanentanum The Personality Ray deals with the first four spirilli, and is the source of their stimulation. Note here, P. 72 ATRE ATISCONCOSMICFIRE Correspondence to the lower quaternary and its stimulation by the ego. The egoic ray concerns itself with the fifth spirilla and with the sixth, and is the cause of their emerging from latency and potentiality into power and activity. The monotic ray is the source of the stimulation of the seventh spirilla. There is great interest attached to this subject in wide reaches of thought and vast fields for investigation open up before the earnest student. This threefold action varies in point of time and sequence according to the ray itself upon which the monad may be found. The subject is too vast to be handled with it. In looking at the matter from the standpoint of fire the idea may be grasped a little through the realization that the latent fire of matter and the atom is brought into brilliance and usefulness by the action of the personality ray which merges with this fire and stands in the same position to the permanent atom and the microcosm as FOHAT is on the cosmic plane. Hidden within the sphere, whether the sphere systemic or the sphere atomic, and the personality ray in the one case, and Fohad in the other, acts as the force which brings latency into activity and potentiality into demonstrated power. This correspondence should be thought out with care and judgment. Just as Fohad has to do with active manifestation or objectivity, so the personality ray has to do with the third, or activity aspect in the microcosm. The work of the third aspect logoic was the arranging of the matter of the system so that eventually it could be built into form through the power of the second aspect. Thus the correspondence works out. By life upon the physical plane, that life wherein the physical permanent atom has its full demonstration, the matter is arranged and separated that must eventually be built into the temple of Solomon, the egoic body, through the agency of the egoic life, the second. T-H-E-P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-I-T-Y-R-A-Y. 73. Aspect. In the quarry of the personal life are the stones prepared for the great temple. In existence upon the physical plane and in the objective personal life is that experience gained which demonstrates as faculty in the ego. What is here suggested would richly repay our closest attention and open up before its reaches of ideas, which should eventuate in a wiser comprehension, a sounder judgment, and a greater encouragement to action. 3. The Personality Ray and Car M.A. It might be wise here to recapitulate a little so that in the refreshing of the memory may come the basis of further knowledge. We dealt first with the three fires of the system, macrocosmic and microcosmic, and having laid down certain hypotheses we passed to the consideration of the first of the fires, that which is inherent in matter. Having studied it somewhat in its threefold manifestation in the various parts of the system, including man, we took up the matter of the personality ray and its relationship to this third fire. We must recall here that all that has been dealt with has been in relation to matter, 
And for the whole of this first section, this thought must be borne carefully in mind. In our second section, we will consider all from the standpoint of mind, and in the final from the standpoint of the divine ray. Here we are dealing with what HPV calls the primordial ray in its manifestations in matter.28 All these rays of cosmic mind, primordial activity, and divine love wisdom are but essential quality demonstrating through the agency of some one factor. The primordial ray is the quality of motion, demonstrating through matter. 28 CS, P, I, 108, 2, 596. 74 ATREATISCONCOSMICFIRE. The ray of mind is the quality of intelligent organization, demonstrating true forms, which are the products of motion and matter. The ray of love wisdom is the quality of basic motive that utilizes the intelligent organization of matter and motion to demonstrate in one synthetic whole the great love aspect of the logos.29 This line of thought can be worked out also correspondingly in the microcosm and will show how individual man is engaged in the same type of work on a lesser scale as the solar logos. At this point in the treatise we are confining our attention to the ray of active matter, or to that latent heat and substance which underlies its activity and is the cause of its motion. If we think with sincerity and with clarity we will see how closely therefore the lithical lords or the lords of karma are associated with this work. Three of them are closely connected with karma as it concerns one or other of the three great rays, or the three. Fires while the fourth political lord synthesizes the work of his three brothers and attends to the uniform blending and merging of the three fires. On our planet, the Earth, they find their points of contact through the three Buddhas of activity, 30 the correspondence should be noted here, and the fourth Kumara, the lord of the world. Therefore, we arrive at the realization that the personality ray, in its relation to the fire of matter, is directly influenced and adjusted in its working by one of the Buddhas of activity. 29S, Ni, I, 99, 108, 2, 596. 30 inches Buddhas of activity. The Hateka Buddhas. This is a degree which belongs exclusively to the Yogacharya school, yet it is only one of high intellectual development with no true spirituality. It is one of the three paths to Nirvana, and the lowest, in which a yogi, without teacher and without saving others, by the mere force of will and technical observances, attains to a kind of nominal Buddhahood individually. Theosophical Glossary T-H-E-P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L-I-T-Y-R-A-Y 75 the karma 3L3233 of matter itself is an abstruse subject and has as yet scarcely been hinted at. It is nevertheless indissolubly mixed up with the karma of the individual. It involves the control of the evolution of the monotic essence, the elemental essence and of the atomic matter of the plane. It is concerned with the development of the Forcefully, with their activity, with their attachment to forms when atomic, and with the development of the inner latent heat and its gradual fiery increase until we have within the atom a repetition of what is seen within the causal body, the destruction of the periphery of the atom by the means of burning. It deals with the subject of the building of matter into form by the interaction of the two rays, 
the divine and the primordial, producing thereby that fire by friction which tends to life and fusing. The karma of form is likewise a vast subject, too. 31 inches from the view taken of karma as I have done it, you will see that no plane of the highest spirituality, be that the plane of the nirvanis, is outside the karmic will and when it is said in the Sanskrit writings and even in the Bhagavad Gita that men cross the karmic